to open your Bibles to the book of Matthew and chapter number 6. Sometimes the Lord speaks to me in different ways. When I say different ways, I mean the ways that are different than the way He speaks to some folks. Maybe it's the same, I don't know, but to me it just always seems a little different. How many of you like Texas Roadhouse? Okay, I've seen some hands. How many of you like Red Lobster? some more hands. How many of you just like going out to eat? <laughs> yes. Biscuits and gravy. No, that was this morning. <laughs> I got to tell you, I like going out to the Texas Roadhouse. There was a time in my life when going out to a fancy restaurant for me meant something, an upgrade to McDonald's or something of that nature. When, uh, when the Lord put Laura in my life, He also allowed me to experience some things that I had never quite experienced before. One of those things was, it was called Logan's Roadhouse, which is about the same thing as the Texas Roadhouse. We don't ever go to Logan's Roadhouse anymore, but we do go to Texas Roadhouse sometimes. And I just love going to Texas Roadhouse. Pastor Thad, I thought we were here to talk about the Bible today. We're going to get into the Bible here in just one second. How many of you, if I ask you this question, when you go to a restaurant and you sit down and they come and they take your drink order, they'll hand you menus and they'll say, we'll give you a couple of minutes and we'll be back to take your order. What is the next thing usually that they do when come back and sit on your table? Anybody got a guess? A little... Uh... Thank you, set your water or your drink off. Well, yeah, coasters. That's You're right about that. Okay, after the coasters. What do they bring and sit down on your table? Peanuts. Peanuts? Bingo! That's what I was looking for. Although your answers were good, Toby. That's what I was looking for. What did you say? Bread. Well, yeah, that's good. Yeah, they come and they bring in little, little loaves of hot bread. And I got to tell you, I, by the time I get done eating that bread, I've eaten so much of it that I'm not really hungry. And that might what they're doing, I don't know, but I just love those little hot loaves of bread. If you're in Texas Roadhouse, they come and, and I know we're on the internet right now, and I'm in no way trying to <laughs> promote it around one restaurant over another, but we, I just love going to Texas Roadhouse because of that cinnamon butter and that little hot loaf of bread. Or if you go to Red Lobster, they got them garlic. Biscuits. Oh my gosh, I can eat them garlic biscuits till they come out of my ears. I just love those things. We were at Red Lobster a couple of weeks ago for our anniversary. And the Lord first spoke to me about this. When they came and brought that bread and set it down at our table, and Laura and I began to talk fellowship with one another and celebrate our anniversary while over that bread. I had once again such an overwhelming sense of gratitude that came over me during that dinner. About like I had this morning with the biscuits and gravy. The Lord is so good to us. Say that with me. The Lord is so good to us. Every morning, He meets us and greets us with grace and with mercy, with forgiveness, with provision, with protection. He really is the source of our joy. He really is the source of our strength. If you're happy today, it's because the Lord has touched your heart and caused you to be happy. Amen. He is that source. Nothing, we say in the song this morning, nothing but the blood of Jesus. If, if it wasn't for Jesus Christ, we wouldn't know any peace. 
If it wasn't for Jesus Christ, we wouldn't know any joy. But because of Jesus Christ, He puts people and He puts things in our lives that enhances our joy and oftentimes causes us to feel so humble and so grateful for every day that He's given to us. Amen. And I had that feeling hit me while sitting in Red Lobster right across the table from the wife that the Lord had put in my life. And I remember feeling so much gratitude and I don't even know if she was aware of it but as we were eating I was listening to her I don't want you to think I was tuning her out because I wasn't tuning her out but, and there was a football game on the television screen right above her head and I fought the temptation to watch that ball game because we were there on our anniversary but as she was talking to me and I was even talking back to her I was having a conversation with two people at one time have you ever had a conversation with two people at one time it's kind of hard to do, but you can't pull it off. I was having a conversation with the Lord at the same time I was having a conversation with my wife. Amen. And I was thanking Him. Thanking Him that He gave it another year together. And I was praying that He would give us another year together. There is a found in the Scripture, Matthew chapter 6, some people call it the Lord's Prayer. It's not necessarily the Lord's Prayer. It is a model that the Lord gave us to pray. We find this in the book of Matthew, chapter number 6. In most of my prayers, I ask God for things that I need on a daily basis. How many of you do the same thing? Yes. That's what we do in the morning. We wake up in the morning. We thank the Lord for another day. We seek His face on, on behalf of grace and mercy. I don't know about you, but I ask for the Lord's righteousness to be given to me on a daily basis because the Scripture teaches us that we don't have any righteousness of our own. We've dedicated our lives, folks, to the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I promised the Lord years ago when He called me to preach that I would forever preach the cross of Jesus Christ. The shed blood of a Savior who forgives us and saves us from our sin. We're living in a world today who, who have perverted the gospel. Some, some of them are not even preaching the gospel anymore. They're just preaching different things like Brother Darrell was talking about this prosperity message and teaching you how to, how to make money, teaching you how to how to invest your money. And they do it from the pulpit. I'm not saying that those, those messages aren't needed. My goodness, if somebody can teach me how to better manage my money, I'm, I'm all <laughs> I'm all ears. But when we gather together as a corporate congregation in the house of the Lord and stand in a pulpit and open up the Bible, I believe we need to declare the gospel of Jesus Christ. We still have lost souls in our world today who need to be saved. And teaching you how to balance your checkbook isn't going to draw anybody to Jesus Christ. So I've dedicated my life to the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And every time I get a chance to stand, I want to speak hope and life into the heart of an unbeliever. To draw them to a place of repentance where they too might be saved. Every time that I have a chance to stand and teach or preach God's Word, I want to speak hope and life into the heart of a believer. So that they know that God is God and He does not change. That Jesus Christ is the same today as He was yesterday and He will be the same forevermore. Amen. That Jesus Christ who saved people from sin is still able to save from sin today. And the same Jesus who is able to heal people in the Bible is able to heal people today. We've heard testimony after testimony in our church this morning about that. I want to declare the gospel of Jesus Christ because that is the most important thing that we can ever wrap our hearts and minds around. And on a daily basis when I wake up, I thank Him for another day. I praise Him for the day that He's given. And I ask Him, Lord, help me to see the beauty in this day. I think 
And that's part of what Brother Darrell was talking about when he was painting that picture for us about these trees. We wake up and we're able to see the beauty of life. God is the giver of life. So when we see the beauty of life, we're seeing the beauty in God's face. On a daily basis, I thank Him for that. And on a daily basis, I ask Him for His righteousness because we have none of our own. I don't want to die today and stand before God outside of the righteousness of Jesus Christ because on my own, I have no hope. But in Christ, there is hope. And what does He teach us? Still yet in Matthew chapter 6. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, then all things shall be added unto you. And then I ask Him, Lord, grant unto us today all the things that are needful to sustain us through this day. I've learned to pray that prayer. I've learned to pray that prayer because we don't know that we have another tomorrow. I pray that we do. I hope that we do. And if we do, I know the same God that takes care of us today will be there tomorrow to take care of us. But I have no promise of another tomorrow. He has given us today. So I seek His face on a daily basis and say, Lord, provide for us today the things that are needful to sustain life in us. In most of my prayers, I ask God for the things that I need each day. I got to tell you, these are legitimate needs. I, I, I don't ever ask the Lord to make me a millionaire. I do ask the Lord to help us make our mortgage. I ask the Lord to help us and to give us the things that we need. Sometimes, sometimes the devil will tempt me. As I'm sure he tempts you. And he'll cause us to wonder, does the Lord really care about the necessities of my life? These are the times when Satan will take us and try to tempt us into believing that God is not really concerned. Jesus, after being baptized, in the river of Jordan by John the Baptist was led by the Spirit. Immediately, the Bible says, when Jesus came up out of the water, the Spirit descended upon Jesus Christ in the form of a dove. There was The heavens opened up and there was an audible voice of God who spoke and said, This is my beloved Son, whom I am well pleased. Can you imagine being down at the Jordan River that day? Can you imagine seeing Jesus come and step down to the water's edge and hear John the Baptist say, Behold, the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. I am in need to be baptized of you, yet you come to be baptized of me. And you hear Jesus say, Suffer it to be so for now, John, so that the Scriptures might be fulfilled. And to see Jesus step down into the Jordan River where John was patiently waiting and take the Savior by the hand and dip him into the water. What would you even say? When I baptize somebody, when I baptize somebody, I say, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I do that because I believe in the Trinity of God. Pastor that, have you ever baptized anybody in the name of Jesus Christ? Yes, I, I have. Well, why would you do that? I thought you believed in the Trinity. I do believe in the Trinity. I believe in the Father. I believe in the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh and filled with the Holy Spirit. It's not what you say when you baptize a person that saves a person. The salvation has to happen before the baptism ever takes place. It's a question of are you washed in the blood or are you not? It's a question of have you received Jesus Christ to be your Lord and your Savior or have you not? If you have received Him to be your Lord and your Savior, then you're saved. We're just going down to the river to baptize you. So what would you even say? 
when you're baptized in Jesus Christ. I baptize you in the name of yourself. <laughs> but could you imagine what it must have been like to have been there to have seen John say, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and put him in the water and lift him up out of the water and see the dove descend upon the head of Jesus Christ to hear that, to see the heaven happened immediately after that. Do any of you Bible studiers know what happened immediately after Jesus' baptism? What's that? Yes, he was whisked away. The Bible says immediately. There was no wait. There was no, there was no time there. Immediately. He was led away into the wilderness where he was tempted for 40 days of the devil. Now, of those of you who have studied your scripture, I'm going to ask one more question. Who was he led away by? The devil. No? I love you, brother, but that's not the truth. The Bible says immediately he was led away by the Spirit to be tempted of the devil. Pastor Thad, do you think that God would? I think God would. That can be a comforting thought if you can wrap your heart and your mind around it. For the times when you are whisked away into the wilderness and you're being tempted and the devil is firing every fiery dart that he can fire and you're getting beat and you're getting whipped and you feel like you're out there all alone and you wonder within yourself is God in this? Can this possibly be of God? Uh, have I got your attention now? How many of you have ever experienced that? It'll help that immediately Jesus was led away into the wilderness by the Spirit to be tempted of the devil for 40 days. A month and 10 days Jesus was tempted of the devil. Does anybody, I'm going to say some things to you today that is going to absolutely challenge your heart. It might even make you bite your lip and look at me cross-eyed. But we need to understand biblical truth if we are ever going to have any hope of walking in the Spirit. The book of James teaches us. I'm going to paint a picture right now that some of you are going to be so uncomfortable with. To be honest with you, I'm absolutely uncomfortable teaching it. So if you're uncomfortable hearing it, I understand. But the scripture says, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make the truth. The book of James teaches us that every man is tempted. <laughs> Help me all the spirit. Every man is tempted when he is carried away by his own lust. And enticed. When we're in the wilderness, we're carried away. How many times have you ever felt? Even you know you're getting carried away with this. See, somebody else can tell you, you need to stop worrying about this. Say this with me. You need to stop worrying about this. How many times has somebody told you, you're getting carried away here, you need to just stop worrying about it? <laughs> How many times have for you to say than it is for me to do. Because the truth of the matter is not everybody is worried about the same things and issues that are worrying you right now. <clears throat> you might be in a financial mess right now. You're talking to somebody who has absolutely no clue what it's like to want for anything. 
And you're saying, I don't know how I'm going to make the mortgage. And you're talking to somebody who's got $300,000 in the bank. They don't understand what it's like to be you in that moment. And they can very easily tell you, you know what, you need to just quit worrying about that. You're getting carried away. <laughs> On the inside, you're thinking, my gosh, that was brazen. Who are you? You don't have a clue what I'm going through because <laughs> you don't have to go through it. Can I tell you something? You're in the wilderness. You're being carried away. Doctor after doctor. Resume after resume. <laughs> diaper after diaper. One thing after another, after another, after another. Leaves us out of this wilderness. And we need to come to understand that when we're in the wilderness, we're going to be tempted to do things that we wouldn't normally do. When we're in the wilderness, we're going to be tempted to feel things that we wouldn't normally feel. We're going to be tempted to say things that we wouldn't normally say. Before the wilderness, it was absolutely unthinkable, but in the wilderness, it's very possible. And the only hope that we have is hanging on to a God who has promised to provide for us every day exactly what it is that we need to survive during that day. In the wilderness, we wind up thinking, what am I going to do six months from now? In the wilderness, we wind up thinking, I've only got ten more years before I have to retire. And so you have to reach. Continue. I would love to. But who says we have In the wilderness, you wind up thinking, I don't feel good, I haven't felt good for a long time, and I... You're getting carried away, friend. <laughs> and when we get carried away, we start seeking remedies outside of Jesus Christ. We start trying to make things happen on our own. And I learned a long time ago, when I lean on everything that I am able to produce in my life, then I will get all that I am able to produce. But when I lean on all that God is able to produce in my life, then I get all that God is able to produce. And i got to tell you this morning, over that biscuits and gravy, oh my goodness. <laughs> I know it's a silly thing to you, but I'm still praising God over that biscuits and gravy this morning. Something beautiful that the Lord showed me. That I'm with you today as I was with you yesterday, and I'll be with you again tomorrow. I am God, and above me there is none other. And this is what I've done for you. It's just a simple plate of biscuits and gravy. But it was the little, the little ones gathered around that table eating it with me. It was my wife sitting at the table eating it with me in the home that God had provided. Our Lord is so good and so gracious and so kind. We worry about tomorrow and we wind up missing today. How many of you have worried so much about tomorrow that you absolutely missed today? How many of you are so concerned about yesterday that you don't see God's grace in the moment today? People fight one of two battles. They are either stuck in what happened yesterday, or they are stuck on what has not yet happened tomorrow, and we fail to see God today. Hmm. I want to see Him today. Amen. I want to feel Him today. Amen. I want to hear Him today. I want to feel his touch on me today. It don't matter. It don't matter. Whether I felt him or heard him yesterday. I want to feel him and hear him today. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to miss his touch and his voice today. Thinking about what might or might not happen tomorrow. Because tomorrow might not be here. Lord Jesus, give us this day our daily bread. Isn't that what he taught us to pray? Give us this day. 
our daily bread. Read with me. Matthew chapter 6. I'm going to start at verse number 7. Say amen if you're there. Amen. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speak. When I teach you to pray and seek the Lord daily, I'm not talking about one of them fancy Sounds like you've been to Bible college type of prayers. Our dear gracious Heavenly Father, we come before thee this wonderful, beautiful day. Come on. I mean, there might be a place and a time for that. But that's not necessarily what God is looking for. God's looking for your commitment to Him. God's committed to you. He's looking for your commitment to Him. And let me tell you something I've learned. God blesses faithfully. When you are out in the wilderness and you don't know how things are going to go, you can rest assured that God has a plan and a purpose and that He absolutely blesses faithfulness. Amen. God is a faithful God and He blesses faithfulness. And it's my faith and my belief in the God that I serve that I know that I have come to Him years ago and said, Lord, I'm a lost sinner. Will you hear my prayer? Will you forgive my sin? Will you set me Will you wash me with your blood? Will you fill me with your spirit? Will you make me one of your own? I know that I am a blood-bought, spirit-filled, born-again child of God. And it happened a long time ago. Amen. And he's walked with me ever since. And he's been a faithful God. He's blessed me over and over and over and over again. He is faithful, so he therefore blesses faithfulness. Amen. We need to walk faithful to God. Have a faithful prayer life. This is what Jesus is teaching us here. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask Him. Well, if He already knows my need, then why in the world do I got to take the time out of my day to ask Him? He might know what it is that you have a need of. I know that my children need to have something to eat. Laura woke up this morning knowing that we needed to have breakfast. I don't think she had a clue that the Lord was going to minister to my heart the way that He did when she woke up and decided to make biscuits and gravy for breakfast this morning. She just did what the Lord has her to do. She had a house full of kids and a husband that can eat like a Clydesdale. And she knew she had to make breakfast. She knew I needed to eat. She knew those kids needed to eat. She just naturally did that. God naturally does things for us. But listen, I know that she is willing to do things for me. I believe she'd walk through fire for me. But if I don't tell her that I need this or that I need that, she ain't going to know. And therefore, she may or may not just bring it and give it to me. But if I tell her that I need it, then I know she's going to provide it. And it's the same way with God. He knows what it is that we need before we ever even ask Him. But we have to ask Him. We have to say, Lord, I've been needing this today. It shows our faith. It shows our belief that God is real. It shows our belief that we believe that He will provide for us. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be that name. I am, so, I am so tempted right now to just break this down and teach it, but if I do, I want to get away from the message that's on my heart. So follow with me. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. My goodness, there's so much here. Folks, I don't know, we may wind up in a serious message here because I'm having a million things come to me right now. Give us this day our bread for the future. Is that what that says? No, it says, give us this day our daily bread. And 
forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Give us this day our daily bread. What is this daily bread that Jesus is speaking of here? What is this daily bread that's, that's tucked away inside what has become known as the Lord's Prayer? Is it, is it a loaf of that warm bread that we find at the Texas Roadhouse? I mean, to wake up every morning and open up my front door and instead of seeing the shopper's guide, see a basket of that little hot bread with cinnamon butter from Texas Road. <laughs> that would be wonderful. That would just be absolutely wonderful. I'll tell you what. There's a, there's a uh, I don't know how to say it. It's not a competition at all. It's not necessarily an argument. We have that little dog, a little poodle dog. His name's Mitzi. And every morning, <laughs> a dog needs to go out to the restroom. And I sometimes I can't stand to do that. And I know Katie can't stand to do that. And so Laura has made it the point every morning when she wakes up to ask the question, has anybody taken Mitzi out? And I'm always happy. If I've done it, I'm just, I can't wait for the question to come because I can say, yes, I took the dog out. But if I haven't taken the dog out, you can see me and Katie both like them. You know, like <laughs> acting like we didn't hear. <laughs> I tell you what, if I knew every morning that Texas Roadhouse was going to put a basket of that hot bread with cinnamon butter on the front porch, I would be volunteering to take Mitzi out to use the restroom. <laughs> but this is not the type of bread. This is not that bread that Jesus is speaking about here. Although it would be nice. Do you know that bread, I, I, I jotted some things down here, I want to make sure that I cover this. Do you know that bread is a staple of every culture? Did you know that? No matter what culture you're at, no matter what country you're visiting, bread has become a staple. Even in the Middle East, what was it that Jesus broke on the Last Supper before his disciples? It was bread. Breaking bread with one another meant that you were in fellowship with one another. It was a, it was, it was a social thing. It was very important, and it still yet is today. From flatbread to yeast filled rolls, grain has been mixed with water and oil and placed over a fire by every civilization. Think about it. Bread is a very important part of people's lives today. And we've already covered this, but what's the first thing that restaurants bring before a meal? Bread. Well, unless you go to a Mexican restaurant and then they bring you chips and salsa. I like that too. <laughs> Although if you think about it, chips and salsa is just a bunch of grain and oil. Instead of, instead of, instead of being put in a bread pan and thrown in the oven, it's cut into little squares and thrown in a deep fryer. Oh, okay, that, that's a stretch. It's not bread, but it's good. How about a slight change to the daily menu? Give us this day. How about this? How about this? How about if we were praying? We said, give us this day our daily Rocky Road ice cream. How many of you like Rocky Road ice cream? I know. Only a few. You got to kind of acquire a taste for that. Give us this day our daily double chocolate brownies. Now if I get closer to home, how many of you like double chocolate brownies? Amen. How about if that was our prayer? You'd say, Pastor Dad, that's absolutely ridiculous. Why is that ridiculous? Don't a lot of people pray? Maybe not for Rocky Road ice cream, but Lord, let me hit the lottery. Maybe not for double chocolate filled brownies, but you get the picture. You know what it is I'm trying to teach you. Give us this day our luxuries, not our necessities. Do we pray that? No. No, we don't. And listen, I'm sorry to tell you this. I'm not sorry to tell you this. I'm glad to tell you this. Somebody needs to love you enough to tell you this. God does not promise to give us those luxuries. God does not promise us to drive Lincoln Continentals over Chevy pickup trucks. He does promise us that if we need 
transportation will have transportation. God does not promise us that we're going to live the rich and wealthy life and have caviar for supper. He does promise to make sure you've got something in your stomach before you go to bed at night. God doesn't promise us the luxuries. He does promise us our necessities. We need to understand that. We need to understand that. And bread is a value necessity. It's tasty, it's welcome, but it's certainly not a luxury. It's certainly not extravagant. Well, unless you're at Red Lobster or Texas Roadhouse. <laughs> another message for another day. Jesus, to tell, Jesus tells us to ask for the necessities in life. There's something you need to ask for. How many of you fathers, if your child asked you for something they needed, would you deny them? Jesus taught it best. If your child asked you for a piece of bread, would you give him a stone? Jesus taught it best when he said, if your child asked you for a fish, would you give him a serpent? We wouldn't dream of doing something like that. It's our children. Then he says, how can you being evil give good gifts to your children? How much more will your Father who is in heaven give unto you who asks? We have not, James teaches us, because we ask not. Some of us ask, but we ask amiss. I can ask Jesus until I'm blue in the face. Lord, give me this day my daily Rocky Road ice cream. I may or may not get Rocky Road ice cream. If I do, I'm convinced it's because Laura already knows that I like Rocky Road ice cream. And she may be going through the grocery store today. And she may walk by the... My mouth will start to water. <laughs> and I'm not casting no ends here, but I'm trying to teach a lesson. She may be walking through the grocery store today. She may walk by the freezer section. She may see Rocky Road ice cream and she may think, my husband would like that. And she may buy a gallon or two or five. But it would be because the Lord followed me. Not because I said, Lord, we can give me Rocky Road ice cream today. Now there are those out there who would rip me apart for saying that. Those are the same ones who are in this name and planet crowd. Another message for another day. The Lord will absolutely grant us what we need. We were lost and needed to be saved. He granted us a Savior. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The Lord grants us what we need. Bread is a vacuum necessity. It's tasty. It's welcome. But it's certainly not extravagant. Jesus tells us to ask for the necessities in life. And he does promise to provide them. Soon after. I mean, stay with me. Stay with me. Getting ready to close here. Stay with me. Matthew chapter 6. Still yet in Matthew chapter 6. Let's look forward to verse number 26. Or verse number 25. Jesus tells us soon after teaching us to pray each day for our daily bread. He also teaches us in the book of Matthew chapter 6 this famous don't worry passage of scripture. Therefore I say unto you take no thought for your life what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Behold, vows of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to his man's stature? And why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Power in the word of God. Power in the message of Jesus Christ. Found here also in Matthew chapter 6 is this famous, don't worry, passage of Scripture. 
scripture. How many times have we visited that? How many times have we heard that? How many times have we been taught that? How soon has it taken seed in your heart? How powerful has it taken root in your life? Therefore I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Isn't that what Jesus said in the Word? It's not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes. God takes care of birds, folks. <laughs> care of grass. Birds, flowers, and grass. And God takes care of all of them. He provides the basics that they need to exist. Rain and sun. <coughs> bugs. <coughs> I don't like bugs. I don't know if you like bugs or not. I can't stand bugs. We've got them citronella candles that sit out on our front porch and on our back patio so that when we're sitting out in the sun on a, on, a, on a summer evening, we're not bothered by the bugs. I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but bugs are actually God's provision. You're not the only one that lives on this planet. Somewhere out there, there's a sparrow, and that sparrow needs to eat. God throws some bugs in the backyard and says, dinner time. He takes care of birds. He takes care of flowers. He takes care of grass. And He gives them what they need on a daily basis to sustain their life. Are you not more important to God than a bird? You are God's greatest creation. You are God's greatest creation. He provides for them. Why not us? Aren't we more important than a barn swallow? Or a petunia? Or a blade of grass? In that statement comes a promise from God to provide His most important creation on earth with food, clothing, and drink. The necessities. Once again. The necessities. If you need it to survive, God will grant it. Aren't you glad that sometimes, aren't you glad that sometimes he goes even beyond what we need and grants us what we want? I'm not saying he never does that because he's done that over and over and over and over again in my life. And because he's done that over and over and over again in my life, I have no problem hoping and believing that he'll give me what I need on a daily basis to get me through this day. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus tells us to ask then promises to give us the basics we need to survive. So don't be, don't, don't worry. Be prayerful. God has something wonderful for us. Baking in His eye. That wonderful bread of life. I've got to tell you, as I was preaching this and reading this and going through this, the Lord was giving me hundreds of different things. So, I don't know. I'm not one of them guys that tries to tell you what I'm going to preach next week. I believe in following the Holy Spirit. Maybe the Holy Spirit will give me something new for next week. But as I was going through these scriptures, He was feeding me more than I could possibly spit out of my mouth at one point in time. So maybe we'll visit this again next week. Maybe we won't. But as for today, <laughs> as for today, this is the day of bread. And I feel like I've preached my message. So let's rise to our feet. Yes. I wonder today, as we close out our worship service, if there's one or more of you here who's outside of the grace of God. If you've never went to Jesus Christ in prayer, asked Him to forgive you and asked Him to save you. You might have come here this morning lost, friend, that you can go home saved. Is there one more of you here today that would say, Pastor, that I'm a lost soul. I've never asked Jesus Christ into my heart and into my life, and I need to be saved. Friend, don't wait for tomorrow, because tomorrow might come. But there's a daily bread for you today.
today that will lead you into the family of God? Is there one or more of you here today that would say, that's me, Pastor? I want to be saved. Just raise your hand. Look me in the eye. Do something. I'd love to lead you to Jesus Christ. There's one or more. I'm not going to tarry this long. I just want to know. All right, then. For those of you who are here, you are in the grace of God. Maybe you're one that is so focused on what might happen tomorrow or next week or next month or next year that you can't see the beauty of God today. And the Holy Spirit has spoke to your heart and delivered words of truth to you. And you're just seeking the face of the Lord today to praise Him for this day. I see your hand. I see yours. I see yours. I see yours. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Maybe you're one who has been so focused on yesterday and pains of the past. You're guarded. You're jaded. You have vowed this is never going to happen to me again. And all you ever focus on is what happened to you in your past. And you can't see the beauty of God in today. Is there one or more of you that I can pray for? I see you, and I see you, and I see you, and I see you, and I see you. Praise the Lord this morning. Maybe you're here today. And you have learned to seek God for today and to see His beauty. And you're just praising Him because He's confirmed something in your heart that you've already learned and that you already know. Is there one or more of you? I see you. And I see you and I see you and I see you. Father God, I come before you today and I just want to praise you. I want to praise you for this little church where we can come and fellowship and preach and teach and just be straightforward and honest and true. I want to praise you, Lord, because we can receive the things that challenge our hearts. Lord, if we be not challenged, we be not changed. So I praise you today for the challenge and for the change. Lord, there are those here by their own admission that are so focused on what might happen somewhere in the future that they fail to see you in the present. I pray thee, Lord, as they, as they seek your face in this moment, hear their prayers, Lord. And strengthen them and, 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 and deliver them, Lord. And help them to see your beauty. Give them courage. Give them hope. Allow them to know, Lord, that they are in your hands. That you will provide. Lord, there are others who are here today by their own admission that are so focused on their past that they can't see you and your beauty in the present. I pray thee, Lord, that you would heal those open wounds. I pray thee, Lord, that you would deliver them from that, from that wilderness and bring them, Lord, into a place of grace where they can recognize you and see you and hear you and feel you and touch you. Help them, Lord, is only the way that you can. Father, for the many who have raised their hand and by their own admission have said, listen, I've learned this lesson a long time ago. And I'm just very thankful every day that I live that God is present in my life. And they're just praising you this morning. Lord, whatever, whatever the need is in this church house today, I lift all of these, all of these people to you. And ask, Lord, that you hear their prayers and answer them according to your will and to your purpose. Father, I love these people, each and every one. And I know that you do too. So I'm going to ask you once again, Lord, please keep them all safe from harm's way. And bring us back at our next appointed time where once again we can worship you in spirit and in truth. All honor, glory, worship, and praise we give unto thee. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.